Welcome everyone. Uh, so I'm Emin Alamdar. I'm working as a cloud native engineer at Container Solutions and I'm joined by my colleague. I'm Ben Gurney. Uh, I'm an engineering manager at Container Solutions. Uh, and Emin's taking the first part of the talk. Yeah. Off you go. Thank you. All right, so we know secret management is hard and external secrets operator, ESO, is a tool to tool that can help you with that. And we will explain how and, uh, you know, how ESO can help you with, with secret management. So we're going to start with the question. The question is, is Kubernetes secure by default? And we want to ask you this question, actually. Do you think Kubernetes is secure by default? <laughs> There's a no from there. Because, you know, when you think about it, you have to manage roles, accounts, service accounts, you know, role bindings and network policies, et cetera, et cetera. And of course, secrets and encrypting the etcd as well. So we know the answer is no for this question. And when you think about it, we have to ask ourselves the same question over and over again. Is everything secure? From the kernel to, to our applications, the firewall, network configurations, user accounts, everything, and of course, secrets as well. So how can we secure everything? Well, with, with, with third-party integrations, third-party tools, there are great tools out there for us, uh, for us to use and, and secure our environments and Kubernetes clusters. And there are tools for secret management as well. So, but there is a but. Security can fail as well. There are, there are some challenges. For example, complexity is the, maybe the number one enemy of the security. And secret management can get complex easily. And also, there are so many secrets out there we have to manage, we have to manage the life cycle of them. And it, it increases the attack surface, it increases the, uh, you know, lack of management, lack of control. And also, and also there, is, uh, there is the integration part that we have to manage, we have to configure different providers, we have to configure different environments. And multiple teams using multiple environments right now. We don't have just one cluster and one provider for everything. And when we think about secret management, we all have sensitive data like API keys, login credentials, certificates, etc. And there are great secret management tools out there like HashiCorp Vault, AWS Secret Manager, Azure Key Vault, etc., and they they allows us they allow us to uh, securely store our secrets in a place, and they do that perfectly. And they have other great features like auditing, secret rotation, etc., etc. And there is a problem, not this one. There's a problem with that as well. That is. Uh, how do you distrib distribute those secrets? How do you consume those secrets actually from those secret management providers? You, you either choose in-app configurations, you either choose a sidecar container, or you can use a controller. Or the second one, there are so many secrets to manage actually. Before, you know, in the past it was easy but right now, with the distributed systems, with microservices, we have a lot of service and a lot of secrets to manage at the same time. And it is becoming even harder to handle the rotation for those secrets as well, managing the life cycle of those secrets as well. And this is your part, Ben. Okay. You go. <laughs> so I get the solution part. So. Um, Obviously, what we're here to talk to you about is ESO, External Secrets Operator, uh, and we see ESO as a great solution to the particular problem of secrets management at scale. Uh, ESO will basically sit inside of your Kubernetes cluster, 
uh, it'll act as an operator, so it's basically an extension to your Kubernetes. It'll take your external secrets from whichever providers you choose. You can use multiple providers at once. You can use one single provider. Uh, it'll take them from your external provider and it will then distribute the secrets into the namespaces where you need them as Kubernetes secrets. Um, let me tell you a little bit more about how that works. So obviously we're talking about an operator here, so it's based on the controller pattern, which I assume most people know, but just to be absolutely clear, um, the basic idea is that you have a reconciliation loop, which you're gonna go round again and again and again, basically forever. Um, you will set the length of your reconciliation loop, and each time you go round, the desired state, which is set in your code, will be observed to see whether it's currently in line with the current state. If it's not in line with the current state, then uh, you're, in this case, an operator. Your operator is going to adjust through the Kubernetes API to bring it in line so that current state and desired state are the same until the next time it goes around the loop when it will check again. So an operator is really an application-aware controller pattern. And in our case, the custom resource definitions that we're using concern secrets. So our, our operator is simply a controller which is aware of secrets. So uh, the CRDs that we use uh, are secret store. So the purpose of the secret store, you can see over here, uh, controls all of the information that you need to connect into your third party secret store. So it will say in the example of AWS, it will tell you which account, which ARN, which role you're going to use to connect in to the secrets provider. Um, you can see here the secret store is per namespace. Um, so each namespace will have its own secret store CRD um, and it will only have access to the secrets that that particular namespace needs. Uh, down here you've then got your external secret itself which is the key value pair uh, which will give your secret value a name and will then use the secret store to, re to return the actual value of the secret and pull it back as a secret as a Kubernetes secret. Um, you have two more CRDs, which are the cluster version of each. So rather than being restricted to a single namespace, uh, you're then making your secret store uh, CRD available to every namespace in the cluster. And the same with the external secret itself, if you want to have a secret that is available to all of the namespaces in your cluster. So if we have a look at a uh, uh, more of a real world example of exactly how this would function within a cluster. Um, so you've got your Kubernetes cluster at the bottom here in blue. Uh, we've got uh, an AWS account up at the top uh, and you can see within Secrets Manager, you've got uh, a series of secrets, basic key value pairs, uh, and uh, they have different prefixes. So the ones in yellow are prefixed with A, the ones in green are B, and the ones in purple are C. So you can see how that relates to your namespaces at the bottom. So your namespace A, brilliantly named, uh, is obviously in yellow. You can see your cluster admin at the top here and your developers across the bottom. So your cluster admin is gonna be responsible for the administration of the secrets manager itself and they're going to have access to change and create your secret store CRD. Your developer has access denied to the secret store CRD so the developer is uh, sort of air-gapped from the actual secrets manager itself, but the, the developer is able to create uh, the external secret itself, so they can create the secret, which will then use the secret store to get stored in secrets manager, and they can then get pulled down, managing lifecycle by having a synchronization, which will periodically check that this secret is the same as the one in the secrets manager. Um, and so obviously you've got a different CRD with different credentials in each of your namespaces. Uh, and your developers and their applications don't need to contain an actual secret. They simply contain the name of the secret. And when the application requires it, it's then pulled from Secrets Manager. So uh, the real key strength for ESO is the integration with the different providers. So out of the box, you've got a turnkey solution, which will straight away integrate with 16 different providers from all of the well-known names, such as uh, AWS Secrets Manager or AWS Parameter Store, Azure Key Vault, Google Secrets, 
going down to some you may never have heard of, like Senha Segura. Um, but this is a project that's born out of collaboration. Uh, secrets management is a well-known uh, problem. And uh, ESO was created when a number of different projects, different open source projects, all of which were trying to solve the same problem, actually got together and decided to, in effect, build one operator to rule them all. Um, so uh, these have all been set up by different people contributing to the project. And um, you know, if anybody in the room would like to see a different provider as part of the project, we would welcome somebody to come and contribute a new provider. Our big news from this year really um, has been that we've become a sandbox project within the CNCF. Um, and the thing that's most exciting about that for us is the way that that's encouraging much further collaboration than we've seen in the past. Uh, lots of people are coming to talk to us. Lots of people want to be using ESO. And uh, we, we're already roughly 20th in all the CNCF projects in terms of numbers of contributors. And those numbers are just growing and growing. And that obviously means that we can be really certain that our security is where it needs to be. Let me pass back over to you. Yeah, thank you. So we have a demo, of course, to show you the key feature, which is uh, fetching the secrets from different secret management providers. Uh, I have a tiny Kubernetes cluster, mini kube cluster, and I've installed external secrets operator on top of that cluster. And what I'm going to do is now fetch a secret from HashiCorp Vault, I've added a key value secret there. And right now, after that, after that, uh, I'm gonna change some values in the YAML file, then apply it again, and fetch, the, fetch a different secret from AWS, uh, and, and see how it works now. Oh, that's... You need to go back to, okay, screen mirror it. You're never going uh, to... Yeah, yeah. 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 Can you see it? Oh, yeah. All right. There we go. So now I've installed... Like I said, HashiCorp Bolt, it's running, up and running, and I've installed also uh, external secrets operator. It's up and running as well. And I have some files that I want to show you for, you know, this custom resources that, that Ben talked about. For Vault, we have this Vault secret store that that's defining where the Vault server is, which path should be accessed to, and how to authenticate with Vault as well. And I, I also have a secret store definition for AWS Secrets Manager as well. Uh, I'm defining the service, which service I'm going to use, which is Secrets Manager in this case, but you can use Parameter Store as well, which region that I'm going to connect to, and the authentication method, which you shouldn't use like this. <laughs> I, I just created secrets with access key and secret access key. You can use IAM rules for service accounts to connect to AWS services with the required limited rules. And let's just, we have an external secret definition, as you can see. It is now referring to HashiCorp Vault and it's gonna create a secret name, KCD UK secret, and it's going to check, uh, fetch the secret within this path. Let's just apply it. It's now created, let's get resource. As you can see, it is now synced, and there is a secret created with the name of KCD UK secret, and of course, we can just look at the
data in there. Uh, as you can see, it's, it's saying secret from Bolt. I've just added Cobsay and Lolcat. These are tiny tools you can use. Now, we can do, what we can do is change some parameters in the external secret file. Firstly, I'm going to change this to AWS Secrets Manager. And also remove these and comment these ones out and go back to my terminal and apply this same file again. It is now configured. Uh, let's see if it's synced. Yep, there it is. It is synced. There's a refresh interval, by the way. I've, I haven't added a refresh interval parameter to the YAML file, but you can do that. Uh, it'll, it'll automatically sync the secret from the secret management provider uh, when the refresh interval is up. And when we get the data, as you can see, it is now fetching the secret from AWS Secrets Manager. Yeah. That's all for my demo. I can just change this to show. Get back to the presentation, but I can't find it. Let me just check. It is not this one. Yeah, there it is. Yeah, it's up. So, as you can see, we can now fetch secrets just, just changing some values in, in a YAML file, in a plain YAML file, uh, from, different, uh, from different secret management providers with external secrets operator. It's, it's kind of acting like a centralized you know, management control plane for all of our secrets. And the, the main idea is, basically, Managing secrets in Kubernetes easily, uh, you can do that with Kubernetes secrets objects. So, so you can use the, those newly created Kubernetes secrets objects in your application definitions, deployment definitions. All right? Yep. So you can, as Ben said, you can reach out to us and contribute to external secrets operator project. Uh, you can scan these QR codes. Uh, we, are, we are at Kubernetes Slack, uh, the external secrets channel. And you can also reach out from the Twitter account for external secrets operator. And yeah, you're always welcome to contribute to the project. Yeah, so I'd just like to add, so the Kubernetes Slack is the best way to contact us. If anybody tries using ESO, if you need any support, just speak to us through there and we'll make sure that you get all the support that you need. Uh, we also do an online meetup once a month where we'd love to see people there. Our favorite thing is to hear about actual use cases and figure out how well we're mapping against the use cases people have in the real world. Um, we've got some exciting features coming up. So we're dev complete on push secret, which uh, we still need to get through testing. We're actually doing a little refactor on it based on the testing that we did. Um, but push secrets will mean that you can pull a secret from one provider. Uh, you can then make it available in your Kubernetes clusters and you can then actually synchronize it to a different provider. So you'll then be able to keep copies of secrets in, you could have your secrets in AWS and you could have a sync set of secrets in Google or wherever you choose to have them. Uh, so that's going to be quite powerful. The next thing that we're planning out currently is going to be actually generating the secrets within ESO so that it'll be a turnkey solution to manage the life cycle from creating the secrets, syncing them, pushing, pulling, whatever you need. Um, and it's all hands on deck. If anybody wants to come and give us a hand, we'd be delighted. Yep. Thanks very much. Thank you.